Hey everyone, let's take a look at Hogwarts Castle and Grounds by Lego Harry Potter. This is set number 76419, contains 2,660 bricks, retails for $169.99, and this set was provided by the Lego Group for early review. And it looks like we get to build a mini scaled version of Hogwarts. It's obviously not mini figure scaled. <laughs> And so you got a ship there and all sorts of stuff. And it does come with, looks like, one mini figure, and it's the architect of Hogwarts. Looks like he's a gold figure at that. And let's take a look at the back of the box. And this is essentially what it is. It's just merely a display piece. And it does measure 35 centimeters or 13.5 inches wide by 21 centimeters or eight and a half inches tall. So it's basically just, it's like it's built on a base plate of some sort. I'm not sure how that's all pieced together. And that's pretty much what it is. Now let's crack this box open and see what we have in here. And it's pretty heavy. So, Kind of curious to see what kind of parts we do have in the set here. Now, if you're interested in the unbagging of everything, uh, I'm going to have it on my second channel along with the build. Because, well, as you can tell, this would be about a two hour unboxing, so I'm not going to do all that. I'll spare you and guys and gals the trouble here. So, a lot of bags there. And we'll just roughly go through it. And we have this. It needs to be opened. And yes, they do save those too. So, let's see what we have in here. And we got a couple of building guides and nothing else in there. I was expecting stickers. Maybe this one's printed. Yeah, I'll get one and two. Alright, well, let's see how the manual is broken up here. And we'll see, we'll see what it is here. I'm kind of curious, and we'll go through all this on my second channel. So it does something like this. So bags 1 through 1 through 11 does the base, which that doesn't look too bad, huh? And this one here will probably tell me the last part of the, the build. And we have 12 through 22. So it looks like we have up to 22 bags of fun and excitement. I'm going to make sure real quick, and and we're going to check here at the very end. Well, yes, it does stop at 22. Okay, well, that takes care of that <laughs> little thing here. And just by quick assessment of the bags, it looks like there's a lot of color in this set. Not like the other one that I did. I don't know if there's like one bag one, one bag two, or is there like 15 bag number threes? We don't know. Oh, almost caught you there. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Nice big, transparent blue. Oh, okay. I don't think I have any of these in black. Any more in there? Or is that just it? Looks like that's it, folks. Well, if you want to join me on my second channel, we're going to be putting this together. I'll probably have to have a, a link to the first episode on, can be posted on here. I don't know yet, but you can see I got bags falling all over the place. So I'm going to leave this packaged. I'm going to build it. Then I'm going to come back here and take a tour. Here we are at the Hogwarts Castle in Grounds, and yes, it looks like we almost have a full complete castle here, but it is a micro-scaled build. So um, my Harry Potter geography is a bit rusty because I don't really watch the series, although I should one day. <laughs> so here we have the little boathouse. We have, I believe this is the Great Hall, the Quad. I think this is the Gryffindor Hufflepuff Tower. I can't remember. It looks like we have ourselves the main building here. And this is the ship, I can't remember its name, that flies you between bodies of water. <laughs> and I just 
did the build an hour ago, and I can't remember the name of it. So it's attached here with a clip. Looks like it's landed in water. Looks like it's ready to take off. And yeah, this is pretty much a full 3D model. We got some cutaways here. So here we have some kind of shrine in here. Some booby traps. And all I notice is this is a chess room. And don't worry, we'll take a closer look here. And picking this thing up can be a bit of a chore. And I'm not sure what this room here is. And then we have like a little like a little library laboratory in there. I can't remember what that is. Maybe it's a place where you read and mix potions. I don't know. <laughs> and, oh, here's that tree that the car lands in, the uh, Whomping Willow. Looks more like the tree from Poltergeist where it grabs Robbie out of the window while Carol Ann's getting sucked into the closet. That's what it kind of looks like to me. And all the graphics you see on these bricks is printed there's no stickers thank goodness because imagine putting stickers on these one by one bricks and plates it'd be pretty much a killer and this is actually the highest tower right here and it stands what is it eight and a half inches tall not too bad and it's like 13 and a half inches wide so for the most part it looks like they cover through everything like we got a little canyon here a ravine or water's kind of cascading down under this the bridge and this footbridge here is very fragile you got to be careful with it as well as a lot of this other stuff on here this is not really meant for you to rough house with or anything like that i'll save my opinion for the review well let's take a closer look here is the architect of the hogwarts castle and yes they even have them on gold too so if you never had a chance to get mr gold well it's probably the next best thing. And here's the little boathouse. I like how the path just snakes up here. And just by looking at the castle in close-up mode, it just kind of looks like this whole thing just kind of snakes around back in there, huh? And then here we got another path here. So we're just using these slopes to kind of raise this path up slowly. And that doesn't look like it's a very safe path to take. So I'll probably pass on that one there. And lots of rock formations. This must be the brewery room or the potions room. I can't remember what this is, but I know this is the chess room here, and there's some obstacle courses here. Take you to some idol or some shrine that's back up, and it's pretty dark. And no, I don't have that light in here. Hopefully, it'll turn out in the video. Now, these pieces, some of these are pretty much tacked in, so things may not line up quite right. There's that tr wicked tree, the whomping willow that sucks the kids out of the bedroom. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of another movie, huh? Poltergeist. <laughs> and for the most part, though, it's got a lot of detail for it just being a micro build. And there's the boat. This took six installments to assemble. Each installment was probably about an hour and a half, so it was a very lengthy build. It was an interesting build, though. It was something I normally would never put together. And then there's inside that area. I'm trying to keep it as stable as possible. So we're just kind of poking around in here. And these little foot bridges are pretty cool, but they're also very rickety too. If I was just small enough, I could shrink down in here. I'd like to go take a tour of this. Kind of reminds me, this little canyon here with the water just looks like it reminds me of something that I see in the back country. And yes, these windows here, these are all printed too. I don't have to fuss with any stickers. 
but there's just so much to look at for just being a micro build it looks really good and even the transparent blue flat tiles add some character kind of wish they would have done more with it but this is i think the black sea or something it's more like a pond so that's probably why they didn't make it a little more translucent at the bottom Let's see what it looks like if we look at it through this way here yeah too bad this wasn't minifigure scale this would be real impressive Let's start the review with my build experience and for the most part I was very pleased with the build it kept my interest and I wasn't too bored with the build it just kept me engaged I think maybe it was the magical colors that were hidden inside the build but I was mostly attracted to the landscaping and stuff but towards the end I was starting to lose a bit interest probably because it was the same old repetitious colors throughout the castle but nonetheless my build experience was pretty good. Now, build quality, on the other hand, is fair. Now, there's some things in here that can come off. Well, let's start with picking this up. You don't want to pick this up from the ends because this and this right here would come apart. So moving this is going to be a bit of a chore. So if you're going to pick it up, just scoop it up with your hands and then move it. <laughs> it doesn't break apart or anything like that. So you're just going to have to be very careful in moving this. And in addition, this bridge here was, is a bit flaky. It seems like it's just barely tacked in there. And I had a few of these towers come off. Like this stuff just comes right off. You gotta be very careful. Everything is just loosely tacked together. But for the most part though, it's not disintegrating as we're looking at it. It looks pretty good. Now, can this be dropped in a Lego city? Not really. <laughs> Maybe you could use it as a little theme park decoration but for the most part it's not many figure scaled so you can't drop it in the city you can't play with it so the play value is lacking as for mock value you could you know obviously finish this up around here or just use it for parts it's a good set for parts but for the price yeah i don't know I, i'm kind of still torn on that one but it does have some potential for part usage for other builds. As for collaborative build, it's non-existent. So only one person can construct this set. You can't have a group of friends come over and help you. Maybe if you take turns or shifts, but it's not like you can all build a portion of this. You start over here at this back end and you work your way over and you start putting the uh, castle and ornaments on the top. So it's not really where one person can work here while another person works on this side. I wish this was a collaborative build, but it's not. My final score for the Hogwarts Castle and Grounds is going to be an 8.8 .8 out of 10. Reason being is, the build's a bit flaky. It's not a collaborative build, and there's little to no play value. This is just merely just to sit on a table or a shelf and just to admire. So if you're planning on getting this to play with, yeah, I would think twice on that one. But it's a nice, beautiful build, nonetheless, for any Lego Harry Potter collector or anybody who's into the Harry Potter theme or into memorabilia. Now for $169.99 for 2660 bricks, is this set worth it? To me, it was a different build experience. Despite that this is a micro build, I'm not a fan of micro builds, but for the most part it did keep me engaged throughout the build. So at the end of the day, I'd say yes, it is somewhat worth the value. As far as for part out value, if you're playing on buying this as a parts pack, uh, it's mostly medium to small pieces, lots of small parts. So really think on that one. But overall, I'm pretty much happy with the set. It turned out really nice. But I want to know what you guys and gals think.